In this issue, you'll discover how a little creative thinking can lead to big rewards. And then you'll hear why it's important to embrace new ideas, to experience failure, and reshape attitudes. Failure is a gold mine. Successful people have at one time or another experienced catastrophic failure. They're people who have rolled up their sleeves and gone to work on a project in which they earnestly believed, only to discover themselves ridiculous and embarrassing failures in spite of all their plans and work. As a result, these people had to sit down and perform ruthless surgery upon their souls to examine themselves and the cause of their failure. The person who settles in for a lifetime of doing an average job in an average way experiences neither success nor failure, but rather a lifetime of middle-level performance. The single element permanently inhibiting his success is not a lack of inspiration or talent necessarily, but the absence of catastrophic failure and the soul surgery that follows it. The element lacking is shock therapy failure, the bucket of ice cold water that forces him to take inventory, reorganize, re-educate himself, and realize that a large success in any field takes large effort and unflagging persistence and dedication. Don't let a big failure or a series of little ones keep you from trying again. William Blake wrote, if the sun and the moon should doubt, they'd immediately go out. Perfectionism is a dangerous state of mind in an imperfect world. We set a goal of perfection before ourselves and groaningly conclude that it cannot be achieved. The best way is to forget doubts and set about the task at hand. While the battle is being fought or the cake is baking in the oven, leave the outcome to the future where it belongs. Failure is the best guarantee of future success. To fail, we have to try to do something. This in itself is an achievement, regardless of the outcome. So try again, and build your success upon the failures of the past. Go after that dream in your heart, give it everything you've got, and don't concern yourself about the outcome. Leave that to the future where it belongs. Concentrate only on your goal and on doing your best. Worthy triumphs cannot be won without faith enough to maintain our integrity. A man's life is what his thoughts make of it. Everything comes if a man will only wait. I have brought myself by long meditation to the conviction that a human being with a settled purpose must accomplish it and that nothing can resist a will that will stake even existence for its fulfillment. If you only care enough for a result, you will almost certainly attain it. Only you must then really wish these things and wish them exclusively and not wish at the same time a hundred other incompatible things just as strongly. Our doubts are traitors and make us lose the good we oft might win by fearing to attempt. More than anything else, a person's manners tell the world who and what he is. To be well-mannered is to do the thing you should do, although you're not obliged to do it. In our day-to-day -day lives, manners are of more importance than laws. That is, the law touches us only here and there and now and then, but manners vex or please us, debase or exalt us constantly. We do not know a man until we know how he spends his leisure. It is when a man ceases to do the things he has to do and does the things he likes to do that the character is revealed. It is then we see the inner man, his real self. The thing that's always bothered me is how a human being can live for 30 or 40 or 50 years and find no interest, no charm and excitement in the world. If someone should steal ten dollars from us, it might take us days to get over it. Yet how much priceless time do we steal from ourselves? 
Someone once calculated that the average person is given about a half a million hours, give or take a hundred thousand or so, and it's up to each of us to determine what his time on Earth is worth in whatever values he feels are important to him. But if we don't get what we want out of this life, it's seldom because we're not given enough time for it. We have more than enough time. As with most everything else, it's what we choose to do with it that makes all the difference. Each of us has a tendency to underestimate his own abilities. We should realize that we have, deep within ourselves, a reservoir of genius that can be tapped if we'll just dig deeply enough. In order to spot and seize an opportunity, or even to recognize an opportunity, we have to know where we're going, what it is we want to do and accomplish. It's always been the tendency of the human being to mistake the obvious for the truth, to see only the surface and miss entirely that which lies below. It seems that with us in our age, we're concerned more with what a person or a thing looks like than with what is underneath. Ours seems to be an age of youth and beauty, of bright teeth, clear eyes, abundant health, so that we can run, not walk, to those events calculated to distract us. And this superficial attitude is as absurd as that of the ancients which held that the sun traveled around the earth because that's what it appeared to do. That which is good or even great is always hidden from our view. Whatever causes anything in creation to be what it is, is that which we cannot see by looking at it. There is just as much for him or her as there is for anyone else. It's a matter of building upon our strengths instead of decrying and wailing and gnashing our teeth over our weaknesses. When we start thinking in new directions, which is the definition of genius, we tend to challenge everything we presently take for granted and throw out the window for a while all of our comfortable knowledge of how things are or how they should be. Well, this is the sort of information that we need to remind our children of and ourselves, but particularly our children, so that if they don't happen to look like the picture on the package of baby food or the ads in the magazines and on television, they won't be scarred by unthinking children or adults whose frame of reference is the common, the superficial. There are all kinds of people in this world those who are content to lead go-nowhere lives, and those who make the most of every opportunity they find. These are the people who transform even their handicaps into assets and add meaning to their lives. In short, they program themselves for achievement. You too can design your life by the goals you set for yourself. There's nothing commonplace in the world except the mental attitude of man. Our attitudes are the result of choice. Each of us chooses his or her attitude. A human being can grow accustomed to and take for granted the most wonderful and astonishing things. Not just the miraculous world about him, but his work as well, and the people with whom he works, and the people with whom he lives. After a while, the glow, the radiance, seems to fade even from the most wonderful and delightful aspects of life. And that's too bad. It should never happen. Marcus Aurelius, a brilliant, thoughtful emperor of Rome about 2,000 years ago, said, Every man is worth just so much as the things are worth about which he busies himself. Every man is worth just so much as the things are worth about which he busies himself. And that's about it. And once in a while it's good to take a look at what we're doing and what we're noticing, what catches and holds our interest. Are we conscious of the miracle that consists of our living here on this small blue planet? Do we find awe and inspiration from the mystery that surrounds us during our personal holiday on Earth? If we think about it, the sameness of our lives will vanish, the ordinary will be a thing of the past, and we'll begin to notice and enjoy life again and all that it entails. We won't take people for granted anymore, or our work, or our lives. Before we turn loose of anything to which we've set our hand and mind, we should ask ourselves, is this up to my standards of quality? And because quality of any sort is a journey more than a destination, we should also ask ourselves, how can I improve on the quality of what I do?
Wood burns because it has the proper stuff in it. And a man becomes great because he has the proper stuff in him. I think that the most fortunate adults are those who are living well today, but who knew a deprived childhood. It's also true, I think, that the most creative people are those who had a rough time as kids. Children raised in poverty, or if not poverty, at least on the wrong side of the tracks, must fall back on their imagination for enjoyment. Their lives are filled with daydreams. Their imaginations become wonderfully active. In an instant, their bleak surroundings can vanish, and in the warm, sunny world of their minds, all sorts of wonderful things can happen to them. Under almost all conditions, there's a world to be enjoyed. But the most fortunate people seem to be those who knew a certain amount of privation, success beyond anything we might now imagine, lies in wait for those who can put together enough courage to actually live the life they imagine. You know, most people live in two worlds. There's the real world, the world in which they work and move and live, and there's the world of the imagination, the world they would secretly like to live in. What keeps them from moving from the world of reality into the world of their imagination is habit and the fear of falling flat on their face in the attempt and losing even the little which they presently have and perhaps looking ridiculous in the eyes of their loved ones and friends. What we fail to realize is what Thoreau discovered, that if one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavors to live the life which he has imagined, he will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. Life pays off most handsomely when we're doing that which we most want to do, when we're actually living the life we have imagined for so long. It does mean that we should live the life that we know deep down in our very being that we would most like to live. It means that we should be doing that which every indicator of our makeup, every fiber of our being tells us we should be doing and has been telling us for some time. When an idea tugs at us day after day, year after year, when we think about it as we lie awake in bed or the first thing when we wake up or every time there's a lull in our days, when it worries our consciousness like a puppy with a slipper, then it's time to do something about it. And even though making the move might seem to jeopardize everything of order in our lives, One of the ultimate tests of faith is our capacity to go on believing that somehow the right is the right, even when right is on the scaffold and wrong seems to be on the throne. All of the great ventures of our lives require faith enough to bear the burden of our doubts so that we're able to take the first step in the direction that we wish to go. Enough of faith to keep on going through struggle and strain and to maintain integrity on the way. Faith, as the ancient seer wrote, is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And we need to exchange a life of doubt diversified by faith for one of faith diversified by doubt. When a person doesn't know what harbor he's making for, no wind is the right wind. You have to know what you're shooting for to see the opportunity by which we're all surrounded. If a man is working toward a predetermined goal and knows where he's going, that man is a success. If he's not doing that, he's a failure. The opposite of courage in our society is not cowardice, it is conformity. People acting like everyone else, without knowing why, without knowing where they're going. These people believe that their lives are shaped by circumstances, by things that happen to them, by exterior forces. The only man who succeeds is the man who is progressively realizing a worthy ideal. He's the man who says, I'm going to become this, and then begins to work toward that goal. And have you ever noticed that a man who becomes successful tends to continue to become successful? And on the other hand, have you noticed how a man who is a failure tends to continue to fail? It's because of goals. Some of us have them, some don't. People with goals succeed because they know where they're going.
Now it stands to reason that a person who's thinking about a concrete and worthwhile goal is going to reach it, because that's what he's thinking about. And we become what we think about. Conversely, the man who has no goal, who doesn't know where he's going, and whose thoughts must therefore be thoughts of confusion and anxiety and fear and worry, becomes what he thinks about. His life becomes one of frustration, fear, anxiety, and worry. And if he thinks about nothing, he becomes nothing. Now think of a ship leaving a harbor, and think of it with the complete voyage mapped out and planned. The captain and crew know exactly where it's going and how long it will take. It has a definite goal. 9,999 times out of 10,000, it will get to where it started out to get. Now let's take another ship, just like the first, only let's not put a crew on it or a captain at the helm. Let's give it no aiming point, no goal, no destination. We just start the engines and let it go. I think you'll agree with me that if it gets out of the harbor at all, it will either sink or wind up on some deserted beach a derelict. It can't go any place because it has no destination and no guidance. It's the same with a human being. Why do men with goals succeed in life and men without them fail? Well, let me tell you something which, if you really understand it, will alter your life immediately. If you understand completely what I'm going to tell you from this moment on, your life will never be the same again. You'll suddenly find that good luck just seems to be attracted to you. The things you want just seem to fall in line. And from now on, you won't have the problems, the worries, the gnawing lump of anxiety that perhaps you've experienced before. Doubt, fear, well, they'll be things of the past. Here's the key to success and the key to failure. We become what we think about.